Good afternoon, Lagos. How are you? What's going on? I said, good afternoon, Lagos. How are you doing today? <laughs> Hi, Lola. <laughs> I come bearing gifts. So in this bag, I have a bag. I have, I have loads of gifts. Now, for you to get one item, I need to feel the energy, okay? Are you ready? Hello, Lagos. How are you? Okay, fantastic. Now, <laughs> now, my first question before I introduce our facilitator, who can tell me the topic of today's masterclass? Not you, Lola. <laughs> can I have the lady in purple, please? Is this someone to help me out with a microphone? Okay, just tell me. I think I can hear you from here. Fantastic. Can I get an usher to give her this, please? You said it first. I didn't see your hands up. There you go. One for her. I'm trying to get my energy up, okay? Because our facilitator is amazing. And I want you to give her a warm Lagos welcome. So I'm trying to get the energy up, okay? So guys, one last question, okay? Are you ready? Fantastic. What are the top fashion editorials in the U.S.? Who can tell me? One. The top fashion editorials in the U.S. Okay. I have Elle. Elle. <laughs> she screamed louder. Your voice is not loud enough. Can I get another one? Okay. I have one lady at the back. One more and then I'm done. <laughs> there you go. One for him. Okay, fantastic. Now let's get to the business of the day. Okay? Sorry, can you help me? Thank you very much. I feel very honored to be here with you all today. Our next facilitator, before I, you know, introduce her, she's such an amazing person, such a vibrant personality. She's one of us. She's the first West African woman to be a style editor at Elle magazine. Her style, her style has been described as eccentric, classy, and fashionable. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Nikki Ogunaike. Hello, hello. Can everyone say hello to my Instagram, please? Woo! A big Niger hello! Yes, oh yes, yes. Thank you so much, Nikki, welcome. Thank you. So excited to see everyone today. The energy is good. We're gonna have a good time, right? Yes, yes. Hi, Nikki. Hello. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. You happy to be in Nigeria? Very happy to be in Nigeria. It's well, home. It's home. Yeah. When was the last time you were home? Uh, very long time, actually. But okay. it's changed so much. It's great to see all the creative faces here. So much in fashion and art and music. It's really wonderful. It's okay. really wonderful to be back. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about today is your background. Tell me about your background. So I was born in the United States. My parents both moved there in the 70s and... We, um, we lived in Washington, D.C. And when I was a kid, I always knew that I wanted to work in fashion. Um, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be a possibility or not. But then my sister, who's in the front row here, her name is Lola, Lola Ogunaike. Um, Lola paved the road for me in terms of journalism, working at CNN and at Daily News, New York Times. So I knew it was going to be a possibility to make a career of working in this industry. So when I moved to New York in 2007, I uh, got an internship at Elle Magazine, or Elle Magazine, and then from there I worked at InStyle and Glamour, and now I'm back at Elle, and I've been there for three years. Fantastic. Now, at the time that you got into this creative space, a lot of us Nigerian children we were brought up with the notion that you're either a doctor or a lawyer or a banker. How were you able to break that mindset of your parents? 
You know, I think that all of our parents, any good parent just wants you to be okay, right? Mm -hmm. They want you to make money and be able to survive. And so when Lola was able to show them that you could make a career of this, and then I was able to show them that I can make a career of this, they felt okay. I think that, you know, we as a Nigerian people are very hardworking, so you just have to do your best in your career okay. and in your field, and then you will always have that support. Fantastic. Okay. I'm not putting you on the sports. Uh-oh. <laughs> but what does style mean to you? What does style mean to me? Style is inspiration. It is, um, and style is a portrait of who you are as a person. Okay. So when you put on your clothing every day, you're telling the world something. And so here I'm telling the world with this outfit that I like colors and I like vibrancy and I'm excited to be here. So what am I telling the world I about? I think you're my... telling me the same thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the okay. yellow is nice. So, right. you know, I think that fashion and style is just inspired by what you see in the world mm -hmm. via Instagram, via Snapchat, and also through fashion magazines and websites. Okay, fantastic. Now, in okay, by the way, uh, um, Nikki, and ha Nikki and I, I've had several conversations, right? And in one of those conversations, we're talking about fashion trends, about how it is best that an individual stays true to themselves as opposed to following trends. Tell us a little bit about that. I think that trends are great and they you know, set the scene for what is going to come in fashion for the next month or so, two months, three months. But I think that it's important to stay authentic to yourself. And so you take a trend and you make it work for you. So say, you know, pink pants are in, maybe how you style the pants in different ways is an example of being authentic to who you are as a person. Um, I don't think that people can necessarily follow trends off a cliff, as we like to say. You don't have to wear all the trends at once. You find the trend that works for you and really stick to it and make it your own. Fantastic. Okay, we have said we had agreed that we're going to divide the session into two, being that we have, do we have any fashion bloggers here? Style influencers, See social media influencers. influencers. In the over there. Ooh, there you go. Hi, Ahawa. Okay, can I see a show of hands? Fashion influencers on social media. Fantastic. So the rest of us are just consumers, right? Yeah? There's no? a mix. Okay, so what is, what is the, what, the rest of us are what? Designers. designers, oh, okay. fantastic. Yes. Okay, so we have something for the designers. But now I have a question for you regarding the social media influencers. Now, like some of you may be aware, Nikki produces, what do you call them, IRL videos? Yes, Tell so us about that. I started a series at L called Online IRL. IRL stands for In Real Life. So what I do is I shop fast fashion websites like Fashion Nova or Pretty Little Things, and I try them on myself. So I'm the fit model to see what the clothing looks like on a uh, size 10 UK body. And I started this series because I thought it was important to show what clothing looked like on a non-model. We talk a lot about diversity in the fashion industry, but there are a lot of strides that can be made in terms of who are the models, what they look like, what their hair looks like, you know, diversity is a big issue in the States, and I think it's an issue here as well. And so when I started that franchise, I really wanted to say, you know, here I am in a 10 UK body. This is my body. You can look at it. You can size up for me. You can size down for me. And just get an idea of what this fast fashion sort of looks like on an average body type. Oh, okay, fantastic. Now, at the time you started the IRL videos, Elle was just doing strictly publishing in terms of like physical copies. Right? Yeah, exactly. So when I started the online IRL series, I had pitched it for one year actually to the producers at L, and I said, you know, I swear, I think this is gonna be big. I promise it's gonna be big, but they weren't sure because L at the end of the day is a luxury, mag mm -hmm. is a luxury magazine. Mm -hmm. It's a luxury brand. So it's hard to get a luxury brand to say, you know, we're gonna give a chance, we're gonna highlight these fast fashion brands. But at the end of the day, fast fashion is what sells. That is what people are really shopping. And I think there is a way to wear fast fashion, but still have it look like it's luxury. So I wanted to be able to give the viewers on YouTube and on Snapchat now the opportunity to see what it looks like, know how it fits, 
and also see the colors and that sort of thing in real life. And so the first video that we did was with Fashion Nova. It got a million views in three weeks, and we've just grown from there. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, you spoke about high fashion um, brands. That's what Elle does, and that's what the likes of Vogue and then Harper's Bazaar, that's what you all do. But um, when a consumer goes through those publications, do you think that they relate to them, being that they are high-end um, products? Editorials are supposed to be inspiration, right? So I think that a lot of people can read a fashion magazine and say, oh, I may not necessarily be able to shop those exact pieces, but maybe I have something in my closet that looks like it. Or maybe I can go out to the market and find a fabric that is similar, and then I can craft something and make it my own. Okay. And so that goes back to what I was saying about authenticity and not necessarily having to follow trends, because you may not be able to afford what is in the editorials. But if you can find something that looks similar and really figure out how to make it yours, tailor it to your own body, then you will be on trend. Wonderful. Now, Nigeria as an economy, is a consumption economy, not a production economy. So what that means is the, the fast fashion you speak about, it's all imported. So how are we supposed to mix and match that? I think that you, know, you can mix fast fashion with items that you wear here at the market. So maybe it's a fast fashion top, but it's a traditional bottom. Or you can, you know, I think that a lot of brands here, there are a lot of really great contemporary brands here. Gray is one I love, Enquo is another. I think that if you can find a way to increase the production, brands can find a way to increase production, then you can shop more here. I think oftentimes a lot of brands want to be recognized by an international market, and that is great. I love learning about designers from all across the world, but I also think that there is an amazing opportunity here in Lagos, especially for brands to grow and really invest in their homegrown talent, and I'd like to see more of that. All right, thank you. Now, about creating co content online, how do we go about that? I think there are so many different ways to create content online, and there are content creators in this room. If you have a phone, or if you have a camera or anything, a pen, a pencil, you're a content creator. And so I think that what's great about Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat is there is a diversity of voices in the room right now, on the playing field right now. And everyone can use their voice to weigh in on you know, what the trends are or what they're wearing, they can gather inspiration from a bunch of different platforms. And that's so amazing. That is something that we haven't seen in 10 years. Instagram and social media in general has revolutionized the fashion industry. Okay, but then you talk about trends and how social, um, social media helps and aids that. But isn't that what we don't want for our consumer? We want them to express their style differently, you know? Why are they having to, why are we then promoting the idea of um, promoting trends? Basically? I think there's a way to make trends your own. And I don't think that trends are necessarily a bad thing. I think that following trends blindly is a bad thing. Okay. So if a color is trending yellow, say, you look great in yellow, so you should wear yellow. If yellow is a color that's a trend right now and you don't look great in yellow, you probably shouldn't wear yellow. And that's okay, right? Because you can find a different color that really works for you. And I think a lot of people really love when they see someone and they say, oh, that is so authentic to them. Mm -hmm. And look at the way they're carrying it. I mean, we had conversations, you look through my pictures, you're like, that one, I don't really like that. I don't really relate to that style. But this one, I really relate to that yeah. style. Yeah. But that's fun, right? Because yeah. we can go back and forth, we can talk about fashion. Fashion is supposed to be fun at the end of the day. Okay. It's an expression of fun, your inner light. And so I think sometimes people take fashion too seriously. Okay. And we should just dress and have a good time and really just be ourselves with our clothing. All right, fantastic. Um, now, how would you advise people in terms of creating the content? What we have found is a lot of people in, 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 the, in the name of you know, create, having a voice regarding fashion, they tend to scrutinize rather than you know, appreciate. So how do you balance it out? In terms of like giving feedback or your, what do you mean? Giving feedback, your own personal opinion on a fashion item for instance. I think the thing about you know social media right now is everyone, while everyone has a voice, they also think they're entitled to share their opinion. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think that Nigerians often, we are people who have very thick skin, so we don't fall prey to criticism very easily. Mm -hmm. But I do, <laughs> that's my sister in the front. Um, <laughs> but I do think that there's a way to, to deliver criticism or um, constructive feedback and keep it constructive and keep it positive and okay. keep it, um, you know, to help someone rather than tear them down. All right. Now, in terms of collaborations with fashion retailers, so you had said that you did the IRL videos with Fashion Nova. Uh, are you paid to do those things in terms of providing your opinion? No. So what's really great about online IRL, this series, is that we purchased all of the items because okay. we didn't want to be beholden to these um, fashion retailers and so we were able to give honest and constructive feedback about the pieces and people have really responded to them and I think they appreciate seeing someone with over 10 years of experience weigh in on new brands because I bring a certain sense of authority and understanding of how pieces should fit how hems should be finished that sort of thing to something like a fast fashion brand all right before we go on, just so we are able to connect with the audience, you had mentioned how it's best to put... We want, because again, you, you give your opinion on fashion items. So I want to try something. And I know we didn't discuss this previously. And guess who we're going to use for this? <laughs> what are we going to use? Lola. Uh, you know, Lola. I want her to come up. You're being summoned. Yes. I want her to come up and I want you to tell us something about her outfit. Something about Lola's exactly. outfit. So weigh in on Lola's outfit. Exactly. Okay. We're going to do this for three other people, okay? Maybe two, maybe two other people. Maybe two, two other people. Okay, yeah. all right. So can we have Lola? I have gifts, guys, so you need to, you need to be ready. Put your hands together for Lola, please. Uh, she looks <laughs> Hi, Lola, come on stage. Do you want so, her to come yeah, up yeah, sure, here? Sure, or are we going to so hit go the on. floor? Yeah. Okay. Come on out, just turn around. <laughs> Lola, what can you have to model for us? Okay, she's modeling for us. And so I guess I'm going to weigh in on my sister's outfit. <laughs> Okay. Which I love. Doesn't she look good? Can we get a round of applause for Lola? Oh, come on, come on. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so as an, I uh, guess, a uh, fashion expert, this is what I'm weighing in on. I okay. think Lola looks amazing. She's figured out a way to use a traditional sort of silhouette, wear white, which is nice and airy, but she added her own sort of sense of style with this belt. Okay. And I love it. And I think she got these shoes in Nigeria when we were just here. So she's mixing, you know, American fashion with Nigerian fashion. And so I, this okay. is great. She's doing in a great In terms job. of body type though. Okay. Cause she has like a slim silhouette. Yes. And then she's, oh, she has no? a secret oh, slim silhouette. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's we, a size we, have, eight we have a secret slim silhouette, yes. <laughs> okay, um, so it's a bit free at the bottom. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and yeah. that's okay. No, but you don't want her to show off that next time? I think it's up to what she feels comfortable showing off. I don't okay. think there are any hard and fast rules in fashion. Okay. And I think that's something that we all really need to understand. If you're comfortable showing off everything, your nyash, all of that, <laughs> show it. Hey. <laughs> they would like that. Show it. If you're comfortable, do that. Show it because people will really respond to how confident you are. I think confidence is key and that is something that will travel across any industry, any con continent that you're on. It's all about your confidence. Okay. Thank you very much, Lola. Yay, Lola. I'm sure Lola wants to take the microphone from me and then just lead this conversation. Okay, can we have someone else? Can we have a volunteer? Who wants to be Ooh, waiting? I like the Wait, guy. Wait, this guy, back. yeah, this one right here. Yeah, he, yeah I saw him I walk him. in with it's the fashion. Nice. So look at him, look at him. Woohoo! Hey. Put your hands together oh. for him, guys. <laughs> Ooh, come on. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, oh, hey. Do you want to do you want to walk it for us? Work. <laughs> you ready? Oh wait, I got to get this. I got to get okay. this. All this right. <laughs> okay. Hold on. I got to get wait, this. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Okay, everyone give him a round of applause. Okay, work it all. Work it. Hey. Hey. Okay, there good. you go. Ah, hey. Looking good. Looking good. Hey. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Hey. Sorry, what's your name? Gian. 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 So. Okay. I like this style. I think there's a great mix. You have the Ray-Ban sunglasses on, mm -hmm. right? And so he has a flat sandal on as well. But I also like what he's wearing here. It's tr it's a mix of the traditional and Western style, which I think is a great way to do fashion on the continent. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah. You, you want to say what, something? What's going on? <laughs> it's actually one of the sketch to fame number three. Like, Oh, okay. Oh. So we, we ran this contest online where we had people, you know, give us their sketches. Yeah. Uh, and th he's saying that this is one of the uh, one of the things that he made. Well, look at you. Uh, I love he it. He is the person. <laughs> Put your hands together for Gian, please. Can yes, Gian get job. a gift, please? Good. One more person, please. Can I want Gian? I want Gian to get a gift. <laughs> maybe not for him. Maybe for his girlfriend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Gian. you very much. One more person. Ah, I like ah, the lady in the blue oh, hair wait, this girl in the blue, yeah. 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 Woo, let's give her a round of applause, making her way. Put your hands together, please. Come yes. on, guys. Yes, yeah, so. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. Look what I'm feeling this. Okay. <laughs> She's giving fashion to her. Look. <laughs> okay, she's gonna walk you for us yes. now. Hold on, hold oh, on, yes. hold on. Walk it for us. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? You look great. You look so amazing. <laughs> what's your name, please? Nifemi. Nifemi. Hi, Nifemi. Nice to meet you. So I think what's really great about this outfit is, again, it's a mix of the traditional. So her accessories are the traditional fabric, but she paired it with a nice um, sort of top. And so it's like a menswear inspired top. And it's a, this is an example of how to do menswear and women's wear, but with um, African accessories, okay. which is really great to see. The mix is genius. Nifemi, yeah. where'd you get your, in okay. Well, actually I made the build myself. You did it, you did it yourself? That's amazing. Well, congratulations, you look so good. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Where did you get your Where did you get your inspiration from? Well, I need something out of the ordinary, so I just okay. picked up a white shirt in my wardrobe. Okay. I was like, oh, what can I do to make myself to make it pop? So I just found an Ankara okay. belt with the head tie. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is also a really good example, and Lola's doing the same of how you can take a basic white canvas, just a plain white shirt, and then really make it your own with your accessories. And that's a way, I think anyone can use that style tip. If you have a plain white shirt at home or something of the sort, how can you, you know, add some spice? How can you dress it up a little mm -hmm. bit? And usually it's with your accessories. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I get a Thank gift you. for Nifemi, please? Thank you very much, Nifemi. Okay, guys, I want to show you a video. I want to show you one of um, Nikki's um, IRL videos where she's uh, show wearing Fashion Nova. Uh, I think it's Fashion Nova, yeah. Yeah, Fashion Nova. Okay, can we have so we'll that show up? a little clip of it? Is there sound? I don't know. Where's the sound? If not, I can just tell you guys what's going on in the video. So basically the the idea for this video was to take a brand like Fashion Nova and really give it, um, you know, an L sort of spin on it. Talk about basically what I just did on stage today. So we would try on the pieces, I would try on the pieces, often worn by celebrities like Kylie Jenner, Cardi B, a lot of people that wear online IRL. And then, <laughs> and then, talk about what it looks like on a on a regular person's body not photoshopped not you know altered on instagram with facetune or anything of the sort just me trying on the pieces <laughs> i got to get in there yeah, right. <laughs> okay now we had discussed um, the idea of using models and i said why are you doing all your irl videos using your body type yeah. cuz again there are different body types, so yeah. why yours? Well, that's interesting because I actually did a bunch of the first videos myself, and then I brought in models of other sizes. Um, we brought in a plus size, a couple of plus size models for swim. We brought in a girl who was taller than me for denim, and it turns out that people honestly just wanted to see it on me, and so we had to switch back to me being the fit model, and I think it's because people can look at my body and they relate to it. And I think that, you know, they can look at my body and say, oh, I'm a few sizes smaller than her, I'm a few sizes bigger than her, but she's sort of the benchmark, and so I know what I should buy from there. And then often in these videos, I will say, if I didn't think I got the proper size, I'd say, you know, I would go up a size in this, I would probably go down a size in this, if your chest looks like this, maybe you can tape it here. So I'll give a lot of styling tips as well for the different pieces. 
Okay, since we're seeing a lot of traction online in terms of your body type being different from a model zone, is it possible that perhaps we can start to see real life bodies on editorials as opposed to like the skinny models? So yeah, I think that, you know, there is a push for diversity on all fronts in terms of what the modeling industry looks like, yes, but also what the industry looks like in terms of business owners, makeup artists, agents, fashion editors. We need more faces, more skin tones, more body types, more different type of people in the room because that really shapes what the coverage is going to look like, the brands who are going to make it in internationally. So the, peop the storytellers are the people who are going to shape what that looks like and we need, and we are getting more diversity across the board. Okay, fantastic. So what is the next step for the publishing industry beyond fashion? Because what we see these days is a lot of industries are going beyond their core in terms of the core of what they do. So what, what is the future of fashion basically? If I knew the future of fashion, I'd be a billionaire, I think. <laughs> but here's what I'm guessing is going to happen. I think that there will be more consumer-facing events like this one that GT Bank has put, has put on today. I think that by engaging the consumers, engaging the fashion enthusiasts, you're bringing fashion to the front door. Historically, fashion has been a very um, blocked off sort of industry. You know, there are people over there who look at it and we are on the inside and there's no crossing. Mm -hmm. But with social media, with bigger brands getting involved, a lot of fashion is opening its doors. And I think that we'll continue seeing consumer facing events like this. And we'll also see not necessarily just one brand doing a magazine or one brand being online only. Brands are going to be considered uh, multi-platform institutions. Mm -hmm. So somewhere like Elle will be on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, create the physical print product, have a website, maybe a podcast as well. They're really diversifying in terms of the items that they're putting out. Okay, fantastic. So you started off at, you started off at a young age. At what, at what age do you actually start interacting with fashion, 100%? Um, I've been interacting with fashion since I was a child, really, and I think that I was just hungry from a very young age to learn about fashion, to write and read and consume and watch movies. Um, and I think that's sort of why I'm here in this position today, because you have to put in the work and you put in the hours of work um, to really just learn about the craft and learn about fashion in the industry in general. Okay, so how did you go from being a fashion lover to a voice of fashion? I think it goes back to what I was saying about really putting in the time and really, you know, opening those doors and really just sort of learning about the industry slowly but surely. I've been working for over 10 years now, so it wasn't an overnight success. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that is going in into this. But I think that just doing the work, the work and really keeping my head down and learning and networking has gotten me to where I am today. Okay. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Now we have a lot of fashion designers in the house. Can I see hands again? There you go. Yay, fashion Ooh. designers, so yes, many. Yes, so many of That's them. That's amazing. What advice do you have for them in terms of making their clothes to fit, you know, everyone, basically? Well, I would think that, I would actually say that your clothes don't have to fit everyone. I think it's important as a fashion designer to know who your audience is and know who you're speaking to. So if you are on, if you're not on Instagram, my first tip is to get on Instagram immediately and start posting your different fashions on Instagram and really engaging in your community. So the people that you're speaking to, you know, they will give you feedback. They'll say, oh, these pants didn't fit. I like these pants in this color, this color. And it's a really good way to get that consumer feedback without having to pay for it, actually. There are a lot of people love to give their opinions, right? You weigh in on fashion on Instagram, everyone weighs in. So I would really just look to Instagram first and foremost learn who your audience is and then try and produce clothing for that audience and stay the course because it will work. Okay. Now for you particularly in terms of choosing outfits that work for you. Again, how do you how do you go about this? I mean, I I found a lot of inspiration. So we, you know, street style is very big in the United States. So I love looking at street style photographs, especially during Fashion Week London, Paris, Milan. 
Um, but then I'll also look at street style here. I'll see the, you know, the people who are big here. Steven Tayo is a great photographer. So watching him and what he's, do, he's shooting here is really wonderful. I look at street style in Copenhagen and Tokyo. The internet is such an amazing resource right now mm -hmm. to use for inspiration and to see a bunch of diverse, amazing, beautiful people mm -hmm. wearing their own fashion. So that's really where I look for inspiration first. And then I look at truly my body and I say, okay, maybe if I can't fit that exact trend, what can I take from there and use for me and make it my own? So it comes with time, it comes okay. with practice, um, and it comes with finding a lot of inspiration. Okay, all right. Did you have any breaking points in your life growing up where you said to your parents, this is what I'm going to do? Where, was there ever a time like that? Or you, did you ever have to like prove, them, prove to them that you, know, you were really on the right path? Because I'm sure a lot of us are struggling with what we want to do or what we're supposed to do or things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think what I've often found is a lot of people who are creative people but aren't able to go into their creative passion first always end up circling back to it somehow. So I find I have a lot of friends who were meant to be doctors, lawyers, when really they just wanted to be singers and fashion designers. They've all not, they quit their jobs as doctors and lawyers and they're coming back because this is what their passion is. This is what yeah. they're truly supposed to be doing. And so I really think it's about, you know, listening to who you are, listening to your inner voice and having those tough conversations with family members, with friends and really just putting in the work to say, I can do this and I can work hard at this and this can be my career path and go from there. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Nikki. Now we're going to go into questions. Are we ready? We're opening up the floor. Okay, can I have someone? Are we ready to take questions? Who has a question? Can I see hands for questions? Lola, not you. I know, Lola doesn't have any. Okay, let's, let's, let's try with Lola. <laughs> can you stand up, please? <laughs> um, when did you realize that you had made it in your career? Or do you feel like you still haven't made it? I don't think that I'll ever feel like I've made it in my career because my career is ever changing, it's ever evolving, and I'm open to other things. I think that when people feel like they've made it, then they get complacent and they sit and they just don't do, they do nothing, right? So I'm excited to always have a new challenge to conquer. Have things gotten easier in my career? Yes. Can I help more people from my platform? Of course, and I'm excited to be in that position. But I always think that there's more to be done and there's more to learn. So I don't want to feel like I've made it, but I'm in a better place than where I started. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Okay, can we have another question? Uh, the lady on the third row. No, no more questions. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Nikki. Good afternoon. Um, so my question is really straightforward. So there are a lot of designers here, and I think the primary issue everyone is asking is, how do I get seen? And you mentioned Instagram. I don't think there's any designer in this room that's not on Instagram, in this Lagos. You know, everybody's on Instagram, giving influencers their clothes. I was having a conversation with someone, and she was telling me she's giving one particular influencer, like, 20 of her clothes, and she's only won, like, two. And it's, it's madness. So it's like, how do we get... Because at the end of the day, we want people to buy our clothes. We're not people who make clothes for entertainment. I'm not sure anyone likes to do that in Lagos. Everybody wants the, the money. You're putting all that work, and you want to see a customer actually buy something and like it. So from your own perspective, with the way you've worked with brands in America, what would be your advice for Nigerian fashion designers who want to sell their clothes? How to get noticed, how to get customers, how to get people to see it, like it, and buy it? I think the number one situation that's happening here is that a lot of people see things on Instagram, but then they can't actually buy them. So there are a lot of pieces that I love that I see on Instagram, but I DM the designer and they're like, oh, we don't have a, and I'm like, well, why don't you have it? Where is it? I want to wear it and I want to tag and I want to engage. So I think the first things first, the production value has to be there. There have to be more than two or three pieces. And then when you do get it on that person, ask them to tag you and then you can, you know, put that on your page and then more people people will see that on your page. You have to create a loop, sort of, of PR, so people can see, okay, you got your clothing on this person. Then they take a photograph of them wearing it, and they tag you. Then people will say, oh, she's wearing that. I'm gonna click on her tag and learn more about what she's doing. 
then they'll come back to you. And then when they come back to you, you have to be ready with the clothing to sell to them. And that's the number one. I think there's a stop gap here where people aren't ready to sell the clothing and that's the number one issue. And I, that's the thing that I think people really should work on. Okay, thank you very much. Can I get another question? I have the gentleman at the back. I'll take you as well. Uh, let's take the gentleman at the back. Hi. Hi. So, um, every, you talked about trends, and everybody nowadays, we're all pushing up our own different trends, right? How do you make your particular trend stand out in a way that everybody comes in sync with it? That's all. So, how do we spot trends is the question? Okay. So, I think that with... I think it was more, how do you make it... Sorry? How do you make it How last? do you make it stand out? Stand out. Yeah. So how do you make trends Your particular stand trend. Your like you have a trends. trend okay. that you want every other person to fall in line to. Uh -huh. Yeah, how do you make that stand out? Well, I think the thing about trends, we like to say in America that three is a trend. So if there are many people wearing this sort of trend, then it'll immediately stand out. But I also think that there are a lot of people in this room called influencers, obviously. So when you look to an influencer, they are the people who are setting those trends. And I think that it's more about if you want to be, if you want your trends to stand out, then it's about, you know, you telegraphing that on YouTube or on Instagram, on Twitter, and sharing that information and that content so people see it more and more. It, it looks like you have a follow up question. <laughs> okay. That's good? No, we have a lady in red. Okay. Oh, Hello, red Nikki. Hair. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Rhoda. Uh, my question goes towards um, writing, content writing about fashion. Um, how do you create content from negative feedback? Most of the time when you do a post on fashion and people are like, oh, no, that's too harsh. Oh, no, that's too mean. Why you do something like a fashion police kind of thing? Like, look at what she's wearing. It doesn't go with what she put on her shoes or the, the way she rocks a bag with it. And then you're trying to create a post from it. How do you work with negative feedback to create another fashion post? Thank you. I think it's all, so the question is sort of, you know, how do you deal with, like, the negative feedback that you get in terms of, okay, in terms of you know, what you're seeing on your Instagram or your social media, or your blog posts, I always try and come from a place of positivity. Now, do I love everything? No, I'm a human being, but I really do think that it's being positive because people respond to positivity. So if you don't like something, you don't say, oh, I don't like that. Maybe you say, mm, it's not for me, but I understand what she was doing with, the, what she was going for with that clothing. Right, so it's all in the way that you shape it because I really think that people respond to positivity. You only want light and love around you because otherwise, you know, we talk about people, we, we call them um, energy vampires, people that suck the energy out of you. You don't want that around you, that's terrible. That's terrible energy, right? And so it's important to stay positive in your criticism and figure out a way to, just sort, of, to sort of shape the language so that it's not necessarily harsh, but it's constructive in its criticism. I love that. Just light and love only. Light and love always. But she was saying, how do you bounce back from that negativity as a style influencer or a fashion person? I, I mean, you see my sister is here. She's my number one cheerleader, my PR person, <laughs> everything for me. You have to keep positive energy okay. around you. Okay. I think it's about, you know, finding your two or three people who you're easy. You can say, I've had a bad day. I'm not really feeling so great about myself right now. And they're the people that are like, no, you are really doing you. You are killing it. And those are the people that like keep you, they that keep what you Lola on your sounds toes. Like. They say that, you know, your, your writing is great, that you're going to make it. You have to keep those cheerleaders around you yeah. every day. Okay, so cheerleaders, fantastic. There's a lady in front, yeah, with a brown scarf. Can I have that lady in front? You're supposed to be handing out gifts to people who are asking questions, guys. Because I'm loving the questions that I'm hearing from the audience. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Good afternoon and congratulations. Thank you. you. How far you've come. Um, my question is, you know, you're talking about diversity in fashion. And we can relate that to the world becoming uh, global village and as a Nigerian African I know we are very creative and we have been given a lot of inspiration to the fashion world the art world and whatever you my question to you today is how can we make Lagos like New York Paris London as a fashion hub 
where it's not only getting the uh, uh, inspiration for designs, but also in terms of economic value that will enhance the uh, um, level of living of our people because and uh, give opportunity for a, uh, the development of our nations. Um, will you try that? Sure. Thank you. So the question was, um, how do you make New, or how do you make Lagos, Lagos a sort of a fashion, fashion hub. hub, a place for inspiration? And I think that it's a slow process, but I think the process is starting already. So Elle Magazine is here. Vogue was here last week for Lagos Fashion Week. In bringing brands here, you know, magazine brands here, editorials, that sort of thing, to learn about the brands that are here, we'll take that back to the United States. I think that even having myself, I am Nigerian, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited to champion Nigerian brands, African brands just in general. I don't think it's necessarily about making Lagos like, Niger like New York. Lagos has to be the best Lagos it can be. Yeah. And it has to invest Fantastic. in its homegrown talent. Yeah. And the production value has to be here because it's good. If brands, if Western brands are coming here and they are taking inspiration from our clothing here, then why can't we have our own brands who are making the best and most amazing things? But we have to be willing to champion those brands, right? So when I came here, I don't wanna shop for American brands in Lagos. I don't wanna shop for American brands mm -hmm. in Africa in general. I only want to shop African brands here because I'm on the continent. I want what the best of this continent can offer. And so I think it's more about having brands here have the production to be able to share the production, to be able to you know, have me shop it so I can take it back, put it on Instagram. People can say, oh, who are you wearing? And I can say with my, held, my, head, my head held high mm -hmm. that it's a Nigerian designer. Wow. So have you, been, have you gone around today to look at what the Nigerian designer No, but after have. this, I'm going out and I'm you going should. to see them. But while I was here, I went to Zenkata, I went to Gray. Oh. Yeah, so I've been able to see a lot of the different boutiques. That was my first thing, obviously. I went shopping, okay. I'm a fashion yeah. editor. So. That's the first thing I did when I got here. And there's a lot of great stuff here. And I think it's more about the people in Nigeria wearing, and in Lagos wearing the clothing that is here okay. instead of looking outward. Okay. Thank you very much, Nikki. You've Thank been you. amazing. We appreciate your time here. And we hope that you have fun here. Have a great Lagos. time. Thank you so much, All right, everyone. guys. Say thank you. Put your hands together for Nikki Ogunaiki, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much. And we look forward thank to seeing you. you in the next masterclass. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.